I need some life. I need some energy from all of you, those who are watching on live stream and all over from wherever you are watching in the world. We understand there are some who are watching us on YouTube. There are others who are watching us on Facebook. And we do have so many people who want to understand which way America. So let me do it one more time. Good evening, everybody. If you are happy to be in this place, let me hear you say amen. amen. If you're really happy to be in the place, let's put our hands together as we thank God for his word. And we thank him for allowing us to come this way. And we are so blessed that you came this way. I'm really excited as a pastor to have a member before you even preach. Can I get an amen? I mean, this is some good stuff. We thank God for that. You cannot even make these things up. Jesus is sweet and good. When people need him, they don't wait for you to invite them in because he has been talking to them before they even came into the house. So we are so grateful. We thank God for, uh, for that desire to join this church family, and you already brought someone in, and we are thankful for that. And for the many of you who are watching online, we invite you, if you can comment, like uh, this video, whichever way you are doing it, whether it's Facebook or it's YouTube, like it so that it can get to the top and many others may also experience the same things. And leave us comments. Comment as the Lord is moving you in your life online. Just comment. We do have a team of, uh, of experts here, uh, members who are serious with communication and who will get in touch with you. If you need somebody to call you, just leave your number and we will definitely check our social platforms so that we can get in touch with you. You are not alone. Somebody say amen. amen. You are not alone. You are going to be our virtual member wherever you are in the world. But for tonight, we do have a very powerful word from the Lord. I'm excited, been excited preparing for it, and I'm excited to deliver this word. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for this moment. We are grateful. We are thankful for what you're about to do. We are thankful that, Lord, you brought us here because you knew we needed to meet with you here. And we pray for those who are watching through social media, that, Lord, even through these virtual spaces, you can intervene and do what your Holy Spirit, he is unlimited. So we pray that, Lord, you may bless, you may win souls into your kingdom all by yourself. Use me, God, as a tool in your hand, and you receive the glory, and you give us the growth. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and amen again. We do have a very interesting, a very intriguing uh, subject that we have today, a very powerful one, the United States in Bible prophecy. You know, the United States in Bible prophecy. In other words, what it simply means is that, listen, everything that happens in this world, God has this thing figured out. Can I get an amen? I mean, everything that happens in this world, God has this thing figured out. This tells us in Isaiah 46, 9, and 10 that, listen, I will tell you things before they happen. So if we had time to interact with Scripture, most of the answers we need will definitely find them. And so we're going to discover from the Word of God where and where is the United States why is she so powerful? Why is she so influential all over the world? Is there anything else that she's going to be doing? And we want the word of God to say it. And I want you to understand, whenever God reveals something, it's not that he wants to shock you, but he wants to prepare you. Can I get an amen? So here we go. Let's get into our word, our memory text, Psalm 119, 130. Here it comes. The opening of what? Let's say it together. The opening of thy words gives what, everybody? Light and it gives what? Understanding unto the what? And so there's nobody dumb when it comes to the word of God. Just by opening it, it gives understanding even to people who struggle to understand things. And when we open the word of God, it gives us light, which means it gives us understanding, it gives us wisdom. And what a book to read. It is a very powerful book that we need to read. A story is told of a man uh, who was a smoker. And this guy, uh, he was a serious smoker, so one time a pastor was just in his neighborhood and knocked on his door and introduced himself, hey, I'm pastor, so and so, uh, I just want to study the Bible with you. And the man says, pastor, I would love to, but I've got a habit. And my habit is I smoke a lot. Then the pastor says, well, that's, that's good. And he says, how can you say it's good? I mean, what kind of pastor are you? 
And the guy said, well, I want us to make a deal. I'll be coming in uh, to do Bible study with you. He says, well, right now I'm struggling. I, I really don't need you to come talk to me. Then he says, okay, that's fine. Can you read? He says, yeah, I can read. And then the pastor gave him a Bible. The pastor says, well, you read the Bible. I'll be back in four months. Just, just read. Just do your best. <laughs> and the brother says, pastor, I don't want to lie to you, man. I smoke, I roll my tobacco. I like rolling my tobacco. You are tempting me to roll my tobacco in this. The pastor said, oh, no, no big deal. As long, here's the promise. Roll the tobacco after you read the page. And the brother says, well, that's, that's okay. I can do that. And four months later, the pastor came back. The moment he knocked on the door, the brother came running. His face was leaked. And the brother says, Pastor, it was a setup. And the pastor says, well, what happened? He said, well, Pastor, I need to understand. I read the book of Matthew, and I smoked it. And I read the book of Mark, and I smoked it. And I read the book of Luke, and I smoked it. But when I got to the book of John, I started rolling it, and it smoked me, Pastor. I believe the word of God. And that's what the word of God does. When you interact with it, it brings understanding. It brings light. If you open it up, God makes himself personally responsible for your conclusions. Did you hear what I said? When you open the word of God, God makes himself personally responsible for your conclusion. What does that mean? When you open the word of God, the Holy Spirit has to come and stand with you and sit with you because he's the author of this word. That's why that text says, listen, just the opening, you have activated the help of heaven. When you open the word of God, heaven is coming to help you to fully understand what heaven uh, meant with that word. So let's get into the word here tonight. We have got the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation, we have learned from Revelation 1, verse 1, uh, especially verse 3, that it is one of those books in the Bible that has a triple blessing specifically for that book. Did you hear what I'm saying? We know that you are blessed when you read all the books of the Bible. But the book of Revelation has three triple blessings that are specifically lined up for that book. It has 404 verses. You can read the whole little book in, um, you know, it's as short a time as an hour. But when you open that book, just reading it gets you a blessing. Hearing it being read gets you a blessing. And applying after you've read and you've heard, there's a blessing. So we're going to this blessed book of Revelation. All of you, whether you understand what I'm going to say tonight, but if you hear me read, and if you're reading on your phone, on your tablet, on your Bible, God is saying there's a blessing just for doing that. Can I get an amen? What a mighty God we serve. So here we go. Revelation chapter 13, verse 1 through 4. It reads this way. Um, and he stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw, here it is, and I saw a beast coming out of what, everybody? And having what? Ten horns and seven what? And on his horns were what? Ten diadems or crowns, and upon his heads names of what? Blasphemy. Okay, let's keep going. And the beast which I saw was like unto a what? Unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a what? A bear, and his mouth as the what, everybody? The mouth of a lion, and the dragon gave him what? Power, and his what? His throne, and what? And great authority. Give me three. I'm feeling something coming. And I saw one of his what? Heads as though it had been what, everybody? Smitten unto what? Death. In other words, he was gravely injured on one of his heads. And, he, uh, and his death stroke was what, everybody? Healed. So this was an ugly scar. All right? I looked in and I saw, listen, this, 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 this beast on one of the heads, there was a deadly scar that was there. But it, it was what? Healed. And the whole earth, what did they do? Wandered after the what? After the beast. Let's go to four. And they what, everybody? Worship the what? The dragon, because he gave what? His authority unto the what? The beast. And they worship the what? The beast, saying what? Who is like unto the beast? And who is what? Able to fight the beast. Now, this is an amazing thing. When you come to 
prophecy. Prophecy is a very, um, and I'm going to simplify it for us to understand it here tonight. Uh, prophecy is when God gives a specific message and he covers it up um, so that the recipient of this, this message is the only one who can understand it. Okay, they, 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 they. so when you read it and you're not the recipient of it, you just think it's bis. You know, you get caught up somewhere, bis and horns and, and wounds, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, forget that. I ain't watching that. But when it is sent to the right person, the, author, the one who must understand it, God will give them secret locks to unlock the mystery of it. So it wasn't a message just sent to everybody who could read it, pick it up and read it. Okay, let me put it this way. Anybody ever wrote a letter to someone you loved? Okay. Anybody who had their own chords in the letter? Some of you are just playing like that. God forgive you. All right. But, but the others who knew, there are some things that you'd put in there. Okay, when I write a letter to my wife, I put in 143. 143 to you doesn't mean anything. To us, it means I what? I love you. All right, and, and sometimes when I'm really excited about it, I put on Italy, the word Italy, I-T-A-L. Why? If you get it, you simply think it's a country. But for us, it means I trust and love you. So here's what prophecy does. So prophecy has these chords in them that the recipient of that message can fully understand it. Is that all right? So we're going to get into it, simplify it, get everybody moving. Now, when you come to prophecy, because this is prophecy, there are two keys to understanding prophecy. Number one, you must allow scripture to explain scripture. Can I get an amen? amen. All right, scripture must explain what? Scripture. All right, it matters right there. And then the second principle you have is that, you know, you must, you must not come to a conclusion on a prophetic message using one verse. Did, did you get what I'm saying? Right. Every, let me put it this way. Every verse in the Bible has a family. <laughs> Which means there's a great-grandfather, great-grandmother of every text in the Bible. There's a cousin, there's a nephew, there's a sibling, every verse. I want you to think like that. The next time you pick up your Bible, you need to say, let me look for the other family members. All right. It matters because when you come to prophecy, it's not one verse explains everything. Let me put it this. Anybody ever been to a doctor and when you got there, you had your issues? Anybody? Let me just, just follow, follow, follow me, follow me. Anybody ever went there? And then they said, well, before we see you, we want you to fill out some forms. Anybody ever been given these long forms? And whilst you're filling, you, you know, you needed the doctor, so you're filling this thing up, and then you get to a part where they start talking about your parents. Anybody got to that part? And then you're wondering, why am I talking about that? They're even asking, are they alive or dead? And if they died, what did they die? Anybody ever? I got mad the other day. I said, listen, you're taking me back to bad memories. And then I discovered, well, the doctor cannot fix my problem without understanding my family history. So as it is with the doctor, so it is with prophecy in the Bible. There is no text that stands on its own. It, it was passed on the baton by another text that came from old. So that's why you must never believe any doctrine that is built on one verse. All right, we're going to, you better keep, keep on coming because we're going to get to some things where you're going to sit there and say, Pastor, are you kidding me? I just thought, no, if it's prophecy, there must be a family. Okay, there must be cousins, there must be, there must be somebody who testifies. Don't be the only person testifying that you are, you are innocent. Can I get an amen? There are going to be some witnesses that come and do that. All right, where do we find this? 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19 to 21. You write this text and you read them at home. If they're not clear, those of you on social media, please uh, hit us up so that we can explain, we can study the Bible together. We have an army of soldiers here at First Minneapolis who are willing to study the Bible with you at your pace. So write it down. Any questions you have would like to experience it with you. So here it is. Listen to this. Here's what the Word of God does. And we have the what, everybody? The Word of what? Made more what? Sure. I like the version that says we have this word of this sure word of prophecy, which means this is real. Let's keep going. Where unto we what, everybody? We do well that we what? If we take heed, we do well. It's unto a what? A lamp shining in a what? Until the day dawn and the day star arises in your what? 
in your hearts. Now here it is, pause right there. God is saying this is a sure word of prophecy, but what it does is as you understand what God has, it's like when you wake up in the morning. When you wake up in the morning, you can bask in the sun. Anybody ever done that? I know we're all too busy now. And they tell me that if you bask in the sun, you get what? Oh, vitamin D. But if you stay in the sun at noon, come on, talk to me, it can cause what? Cancer. You can get cancer from that. But by the time it gets to the evening, you can get outside and get your vitamin what? Right, there it is. So the word of God, is how God works with it. I'm getting excited. Please pray for me. When the word of God comes your way, he doesn't blast it on you. That's what he's talking about. We do ourselves good because it is like a lamp shining to a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arises in your heart. So in other words, God does not just uh, flash his truth on you. He gradually brightens as you take heed of it. All right? All right, let's go to the next verse here. Uh, give me 20. Knowing this first, now here it is. You need to understand this. When you read the word of God, knowing this first, that what, everybody? No prophecy of what? Is of what? Did you get that? That alone is enough. You need to be sure that there's no private interpretation of prophecy. What that means is to my new member, it means I cannot stand up here in front of the church and say, listen, uh, I've got a meaning, I've got an interpretation of this verse. The Lord came to me in my sleep. Come on, talk to me. After eating too much pizza and I had some little bit of juice and, you know, the Lord came in the middle of the night and he showed me. No, no, there's no private interpretation of prophecy. It's public understanding. Are you with me on this? All right, let's finish up. This is important as we get into Revelation 20, uh, 13. It says now, now this is deep. This, is, this right here is too good. For no prophecy ever came by the word, everybody. Did you get that? Which means prophecy has nothing to do with anybody's desires. No man prayed to God for God to give us prophecy. It did not come to us um, by the will of man. But let's go. But what? Men from being moved by the Holy Spirit, which means the word of God was not designed by the will of man. It came because God alone wanted to give it to us. And what God did, he then handpicked men that he inspired for them to be used by the Holy Spirit to write. Here's a little, uh, a little illustration. Anybody ever had a grandparent who could not write? Anybody? All right. Okay. Uh, it doesn't even have to be a grandparent. There's a lot of young people who can't even write today. Um, and, and anybody ever, is anybody who was ever told by someone to write a letter on behalf of someone? Okay, well, let's flip it. Anybody ever had a lawyer to write a letter on your behalf? Okay. So when the lawyer wrote the letter, was it the lawyer writing the letter or it was you writing the letter? Okay, here it is. I like this, this, this confusion right here. Those of you who say it was the lawyer writing, put your hand up. All right? Those of you who say it was me writing through the lawyer, put your hand up. Right, you are very right. Because the lawyer didn't write a letter just because the lawyer wanted to write the letter. The lawyer wrote the letter because you wanted a letter on a legal letterhead, which is the name of a real lawyer. Are you feeling what I'm saying? But the words that was written in there, they were your words. So you dictated, and then the lawyer used the jargon that would frighten whoever was going to receive it. <laughs> if the lawyer says, well, if you do this again, you're going to jail. Now they're looking at the letterhead, they're afraid of that, afraid of the name. This is how God inspired these words. So when these authors wrote this word, it was not their word, it was God speaking his word through them as they handled the pen. So when you read and it says, well, uh, whatever name is given to the person who wrote, it's the person that God used. And this matters because when it comes to prophecy, you don't blame the writer, but you need to believe the content and the true author of that word, and that is God through his Holy Spirit. Is that all right? All right, so let's get into it. Give me Isaiah 28, verse 9. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 9 and 10. All right. Whom will he teach knowledge, and whom will he make to understand the word, everybody? 
The message, them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast, this is the question, give me 10. It says, now, for it is what? Precept upon what? Precept upon what? Line upon what? Line upon what? Here a little and there a what? Okay, some of you say, Pastor, why are we reading this verse? Well, it simply means it takes scripture to understand scripture. So you take that verse over here, take another one over there, take another one over there, take one another here, over here, and then the true puzzle of what God intends comes out. All right? So if anybody comes to you and they have one verse and they say, well, no, 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 no. You cannot explain prophecy using how many verses? One. You must give me the family history. All right, so let's get into this lesson that we have here tonight. So now we learn from Revelation chapter 13, well, there were beasts coming in out of the water. You heard that? And we want to understand what does the beast stand for in prophecy because it's called names that God is using because you need to understand when the book of Revelation was written, the church was under persecution. Was under what, everybody? Under persecution, they were being killed. And John was being given these re uh, revelations on the Isle of Patmos. And God says, write everything and send it to the what? To the churches. And so the enemies of the churches would have wanted to intercept the message so that it would not get to the church, which needed the encouragement from the book of Revelation. And in order for God to make sure the message got to the recipient, then all these symbols comes into play. It was written to specific seven churches with a universal universal global understanding message and that's why you and I tonight can read and still benefit from it. Is that all right? So what does a beast stand for in prophecy? Give me Daniel chapter 7 verse 23. Daniel chapter 7 verse 23. What does a beast mean in prophecy? So that when you keep reading the book of Revelation, you find this beast and stuff like that. This is what it means. When God in prophecy prophetically said, says beast, this is what he means. Okay, let's go. Let's read together everybody. That's he says, the fourth word, everybody, is what? Shall be a fourth what? Kingdom upon the earth, which shall be what? Diverse from all the kingdoms and shall devour the whole what? And shall tread it down and break it in what, everybody? In pieces. So in prophecy, beast stands for what? Kingdom. Talk to me. Beast stands for what? All right. Kingdom. And kingdom is, is equivalent to what? Country. Yeah, we're going to bring it down to where we can get it. So this stands for kingdom, and kingdom is equivalent to a country. So here it is now. We're talking about God says, I saw a beast coming up, up, out of the what? Out of the sea. And I know some of you have been to the beach, and if you're at the beach and a beast like that comes out, come on, talk to me. You're going to take off and run for your dear what, everybody? Dear life. Because you can't Google that thing up. It says, listen, idiot, something like a leopard, something like a bear, something like a lion. I mean, there's no way. I mean, listen, nobody to record this. Even CNN is on the run. So what does the C stand for in prophecy? Okay, because there's nothing like this beast anywhere in the world, which means this must mean something greater and something more. Give me Revelation chapter 17, verse 15. And it reads this way. You ready? Let's go. And he said unto me, what? The waters which thou what? Where the what? The hallowed sitteth are what? Peoples and, and, and. All right, so what is a beast? It's right there. Talk to me. Peoples, multitudes, nations, and tongues. In other words, so when God is talking about this is the sea now. So the, this beast, this nation came from what? Uh, you're talking of people, multitude, nations. And so it's not just water that it came out of, but it came from humanity. There's some human beings that, that this power came out of. Does that make sense? All right. So let's keep moving. Here it is. Uh, then then um, give me Jeremiah 25, 32. Jeremiah 25, verse 32. Uh, there's something that matters. You know, uh, the Bible talks of winds, you know, when he talks about it, and then you know, there's a great wind and all that kind of stuff. So the question then becomes, in prophecy, what does wind stand for? Okay, is it just something blowing up or what's happening? Is it a tornado? What does it mean when prophetically I'm reading the book of Revelation and it talks of these uh, winds of strife and all this kind of stuff? So let's get into it. Uh, let's read it together. That says who, everybody? Jehovah of hosts. Behold, evil shall what? 
go forth from nation to and a great what? Tempest or wind shall be raised up from what? The uttermost parts of the earth. Uh huh. And now here it is. Strife, wind, you are talking of war, strife. So winds in prophecy, it stands for wars and what everybody? Strife, confusion, all these things happening in. So we need to have these three kids for tonight. It matters for you to know what a beast stands for. That's a kingdom, that's a country, equivalent to a country. And then the C stands for people, a lot of people, not a few people, a lot of people. Okay, that's what C stands for. Because if you look at it, all of it is plural. It was peoples, nations, tongues. So when you talk of people, so this kingdom came out with power. And when you read the book of Revelation, uh, Daniel, that we read, uh, chapter 2, chapter 2 gave us the image which Nebuchadnezzar saw, and the head was of what, everybody? Was of gold, and the chest was of what? Silver, and the belly was of what? And the legs were of what? Iron and the feet were what? Iron mixed with what? Clay. And now when you move, when you read the book of Daniel, it's a very interesting book. Because when you read it from chapter 7 all the way to chapter 12, that block of chapters, all of them happened before chapter 6. <laughs> but because it's a one narration, it had to be put together. Because it's one thing after the other. So what comes in chapter 7, God, in chapter 2, he gave Nebuchadnezzar these, this stuff with, with the uh, 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 materials, raw materials, which the king could understand. He could understand uh, gold, silver as a leader. But when he came to Daniel, he gave him animals to represent the same things. So he brings in the lion, he brings in the bear, he brings in the, uh, the, 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 the leopard, and then he brings in this ugly beast. And yet all four of them, they mean the same thing as in chapter, in chapter 2. And then Daniel then says to God in chapter 7, I don't understand. When you read the book of Daniel, in chapter 7, at the end of the chapter, of each of the chapters, Daniel says, I don't understand what you're talking about. All right? So in chapter 8, God says, well, let's try to fix this thing again. Let me give you another imagery of these two, you know, this he goat. And, and so they all, Daniel says, Lord, I have no idea of that. And then in chapter 9, Jesus himself came down and explained everything to, to, to Daniel. And Daniel says, Lord, thank you for the explanation, but I really don't get that. In chapter 12, God says, you better die. Chapter 12, he says, you go to sleep, son. <laughs> Somebody's going to come and get this thing up. So you need to understand that God was, God is a way of, of sending you the same message in different forms, but he's not changing the content of the message. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. So now in the book of Revelation, so the book of Daniel and Revelation, you need to read them together. And that's one thing that makes the Seventh-day Adventist church very special. I'm telling you this, because we are, we are grounded on those two books. You cannot fully understand what God is doing right now when the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation are not put together. One is the lock, the other one is the key. So if you don't read Daniel, you will not understand this beast coming out. Because when this beast comes out in chapter 13, which has got some, some head of a lion and paws like a bear and, and you know got some eat some 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 leopard in there for those of us who have read daniel chapter 7 we get it we're like oh this is the same have you ever watched a movie and you had a deja vu moment you know if you're like me sometimes you forget when you watched it you know you're like i think i think i i think i yeah that's exactly what the book of revelation does on what god started in the book of daniel and so as we get into this chapter 13, we're about to go home. Don't, 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 don't worry about it. Let's get, give me now what I really need. So we want to see what America in the biblical prophecy, where is this wonderful nation in the Bible? And it is a good thing. I'll start right there. It's a powerful thing for you to see your nation in the master plan of God. Do you see that? In the master plan of what, everybody? Of God. Most people, when they hear this title, they get, they get mad. I had somebody come to me and say, well, are you an American citizen? I said, yes, sir, I am. He said, well, how can you speak like that? I said, well, because I'm excited that my nation is in the book. Can I get an amen out there? So the, God is not sending this thing to make people mad. God is simply saying, listen, I want you to know who are the game changers, the players in the last days, who are they going to be, so that when you watch this movie, when it happens, you can praise God because he told 
told you before it happens. Write this down to somebody who is listening to me tonight. When it comes to prophecy, all prophecy is fully understood after it's been fulfilled. All right? All prophecy is fully understood after it is what, everybody? After it has been fulfilled, which means from the moment God gives it to you, you must trust and obey. So God, I don't know the details, but thank you for the principle. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know how you're going to do it. I don't know whether it's going to be a car, a cheap. I, I don't, and I'm not going to worry about that because when it happens, then I'll be like, whoa, this is what you were saying over here. So most people want to fully understand it before it happens. Okay, let me come close. Can I, can I use a silly example? I like illustrations. It's like this. Every person who gets married, come on, talk to me. They have enough stuff for them to commit, but you really don't know who you marry. Okay, some of you are looking so serious. In other words, the person you date is not the person you, you marry. Can I go deeper? A wedding is not a marriage. The marriage starts after the what, everybody? Yeah, whether there's honey in the moon or the moon with no honey, whatever it is, then it has started. So it is the same thing with the word of God. So it matters if we can trust people. And it's so deep. I'm going somewhere. I'm simplifying this thing as much as I can, uh, Nicole. I'm trying. Because what happens is you date a person that you don't know. Come on, talk to me. Anybody ever ask somebody, well, I want to check your credit history. I want to make sure you pay your bills because I think I like you. Anybody ever done that? No, you don't do that because you just assume, <laughs> okay, you, you just assume that there got to be things together. Anybody ever ask anybody, are you a witch? Are those teeth your real teeth? I mean, uh, it, no, I'm just asking. And, and watch this. We trust. We trust. I mean, we have built families on trusting a stranger that they won't strangle you at night. And then you get married to a stranger that you have no idea. Because I've, I've done some weddings of some people. The moment the wedding was over, I mean, the man simply says, I'm free now. You're like, what in the world? What's going on? Well, he came and joined the church because the girl says, you've got to be in the church for me to marry you. And the moment the pastor says, I, I do, I did, whatever they had done. I mean, when we went to the reception, now we just started checking out. People were just dancing funny. Can I get an email? I mean, you wonder what in the world is going on? I mean, people are going outside, coming back just happier and jumping around. And I'm thinking, what? happened and the guy says I'm free now okay so here's what the word of God says the word of God and I want you to understand prophecy this way it's fully understood when it is fully what everybody been revealed in the meantime that's why it says the opening of your word gives light gives understanding you must trust God to lead you to the end of the prophecy so there's a, there's a growing process in, the, in this thing before you get the revelation on the other end. All right? So it matters. It's very, so there are many people who say to me, Pastor, let God show me and I'll believe him. No, you don't have the ability to believe God when he gives you the full product unless you've been part of the process to the product. All right, so here it is. So, what, so, so let's get into this American thing and then we're out of here. Give me Revelation chapter 13, verse 11 to 17. Here it is. Our nation is in the book, everybody. It's in the book. And God, and watch this. You want to you get the good news? The good news is God talked about this nation before this nation was anywhere close to being around. So the only thing that's going to help you to understand, oh, that's America right there. You ready for this? The thing about God, and God is scripture to scripture and then history. History always confirms what God says. You cannot be a Bible student and hate history. Did you get what I'm saying? Oh, I've already helped somebody right there. Because this confirms that. Are you with me on this one? So America was not even in sight. I mean, none of this thing were even in sight. And yet God explains how this nation was going to be. If God could predict how she was going to be, then God has the key to what she's going to do next. Pastor, how do you do that? Well, I, I trust him. I trust his word. 
And when it happens, I don't want it to be too late. I'm going to say, yeah, he, he told me that. I just, I just didn't know how it was going to happen. I mean, you watch a movie and you wonder, man, I just don't know how it's going to end, but I need to watch this thing. All right, so here it is. Let's read it, and then we let you go home. So he says, I saw another what, everybody? Another beast. Now let's change beast to our knowledge that we've acquired here tonight. Uh, I saw another what? No, 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 we're not calling it beast anymore. You know what a beast stands for? Come on, folk. And I saw another? Country coming out of what? Of the earth. Uh-oh. The first one came out of the sea. This one is coming out of the? earth, if the sea means more people, then the earth must mean, you know what, it's, it's less populated place. Does that make sense? Okay, so the, the sea is many people, and this country is coming from a what? A less populated place. Let's keep going. And he had what, everybody? Two horns, like a what? Like unto a lamb, but he's pecked like a what? We got a problem right there. It's like you're trying to date somebody and they, they, they look so fine and, and you say hello and then they go, hello. <laughs> yeah, so that shocker is what John is saying. John is saying, I've just been shocked by this beast that looks like a lion, a lamb, a bear. You, you feel, John is like, I'm sweating out of this thing. And then John looks and he says, oh, look at that, oh, that looks so cute, looks so nice, and it's just coming off this place where there are no people. And then when he spoke, John was like, whoa, what's coming out of that thing? All right, let's keep going. Here it is. It says, and here it is. He exercised all the authority of the what? Now watch here, John is like, I thought it was so cute and beautiful, but he's taking the power of that first beast that came from the sea. Let's keep moving. And he what? He maketh the earth and them that dwell therein to what? To worship the first beast who is what? Uh -huh, let's keep moving there. Um, and he what? Oh no, this little country can do great signs now. And that he should even make what? Fire come out of what? Heaven upon the earth in the sight of what? Pause right there. If you read your Bible very well, in the Old Testament, there is a prophet called Elijah. He was a man of God, wasn't he? And there was, there was apostates in the country. And he said, listen, in order for us to discover in First Kings chapter 17, we want to discover who the true God is. And he said, well, the God who bring fire from where? With, with no matchstick. If you want to say we serve a God who don't need mech sticks because he's fire himself. That's for another day. And so he says, listen, that God is the one we worship. And Elijah did that. Did it happen? And when you read his prayer, he never even mentioned fire. If anything, he simply said, pour water on everything. Pour water, 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 water. And he never mentioned fire. He simply said, God, let it be known today that you are God and that I am your servant. Amen. That's all he, he read the he read the prayer. He never mentioned fire, none of that. And God came down and did it. Did you see the sign that this beast does? It causes fire to come from where? Oh, so it looks like it is for the true God. Don't forget what it is. Looks like a lamb, speaks like a dragon, makes people to do things that follow the bad dragon, and then it, it is signs. In other words, it's a Christian nation. It's going to be all Christian, helping everybody. There will be more churches in this one country than you can find anywhere. I mean, it, everywhere you go, everybody talking about Christ. In fact, there are so much churches that they're going to put on their money in God. We trust. You need to understand. If you look at the money, the money simply lets you know, listen, we are so good. We believe in God. This is what scripture is saying. This is going to do signs and it's going to look like, it's going to look like, here it is. You all know English in this place. Likeness is not sameness. Anybody get that? So you're going to look like a lamb. That doesn't mean it is the what? The lamb. And we know who the lamb is. Who is the lamb? Jesus Christ. So it's going to, it is a look-alike. This one nation is helping the whole world. If this one nation, if this country stops supporting countries, people will die in millions. 
Now, I'm just telling you right now, you're talking of goodwill to everybody. Even the vaccine that we need right now for COVID-19, we have already, our president last week, but one, he made at the United Nations that we are going to give 1.3 billion vaccines to the world. If we don't do it, are you ready for this? Nobody else will. All right? So there's good in the country. And I want you to understand what it is. It is part of, the, of, of, of its, its attractive power. And God gave her this power so that when, now here it is, don't forget, lamb-like speaks like a what? Like a dragon. So if you get the good, you are likely going to get the what? The bad. If it was all bad, nobody would like it. But you start with the good, and then you get into the what? The bad. It's, it's like, again, I will use this one again, dating somebody. Everybody looks good when you're dating them. Can I get an amen? Everybody looks good. Everybody smells good. If they're bad whilst dating them, don't even go further. So everybody looks good like that. But when you get married, you're wondering, whoa, I thought you were clean. Now look at our house. Are you feeling what I'm saying? This is what this, this nation's power, it is so attractive, and yet once it hooks you, then you discover that you're going to go back and worship the best. So there is a connection between the first beast and the, and the second beast. And the second beast is so powerful that it gives power to the first beast. Are you feeling what I'm saying? Old is going to become new again. And as nations come together talking about this United Nations, if you fall, that's why you got to watch your CNN. Can, can I get an amen? On Read your Bible in the right hand, your CNN in front of you, your history book in your left hand. You are going to be balanced. Because as things are happening, when you read prophecy, you're going to be like, wow, but don't go too fast. Because most people run, like I told you, prophecy is fully understood after its manifestation. So don't be quick to simply, there are many, if you Google up on YouTube right now, oh, vac the vaccine is the mark of the beast. No, no, that's foolishness, okay? There are preachers who are preaching 300 million views on YouTube. Because they're talking about, oh, this is the mark of the beast. We are being forced to put on the mask. That's what Revelation 13 is saying. No, 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 mask? How can mask be that deep? Come on, talk to me, everybody. You, you know this ain't nothing. Because the same person saying this foolishness, if they want to fly on a plane, come on, talk to me, they put on the beast. So there must be confusion here because it is not this little stuff that we're trying to talk about. If the mass can impact you like that, how are you going to work when the mark of the beast really comes around? So there's a lot of lying because people are trying to fulfill it before it is manifested. So God gives us the principle so that when the application happens, then you can say, I saw it coming. Because it was in the word of God. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right. Let's read the next one. What does it say? And what, everybody? <laughs> it deceives them that dwell on the earth. There is deception. Not everything done is done for the right motive. There is deception. That's going to come through. Don't forget, look like a lamb. Christ-like, speaks like a dragon. And it says, well, and um, by reason of the signs which it was given him to do in the sight of the beast, saying to them that dwell on the earth, what, everybody? That they should what? Make an image of the what? Who had the what? Struck of the sword and lived. Give me the next one. And, um, and it was given unto him to what? Now watch this. The first beast that was wounded will only live as America sustains it. It's right there. It was given unto him to give breath to it. So in other words, the old system that was there set in place, you're talking of from Babylon all the way, because this one that comes in 13 from verse 1, it is a mixture of all the other kingdoms before it, and which means the principle of leadership, guidance, forcing people to do things and worship stuff. You find that in Daniel chapter 3, and when you keep reading, you're going to discover when the dark ages come around, the Bible was taken away from Christianity. Uh, I mean, there were no Baptists, uh, Adventists, Pentecostal, no. When Jesus left the church, it was what, everybody? It was one. The dark ages, all those things, they are principles that are already in place, all they need is backup. 
So this lamb-like beast is going to fund the system. The system is already in place. The beast is going to leave again. Did you get what I'm saying? So the principle, that was, that's why when you read the book of Acts, it will tell you the church was persecuted. Have you ever read that? Yeah. yeah, there was persecution in the church. It's coming again. So when you read the book of Acts, you are reading your future in reverse. So when Peter and John say, well, we were glad that we were, we were persecuted for Christ, it means you must be so full of God that when that time comes around, you are going to do exactly what they did. So history is going to repeat itself, and the one who is going to fund the happenings is going to be this beautiful, gorgeous country of the United States. Now, people want to say, well, Pastor, where is it now? No, God is giving us a future picture of what's going to happen. It hasn't happened yet. Are you with me on this one? Come on, talk to me. It hasn't happened where? Yet. The image of the beast is not yet. It can only be activated when laws are put into place to make it a legal thing. So don't go around looking at people and say, well, you have the mark of the beast. No, nobody has it. Okay, I thought someone was going to say amen. amen. Nobody has it. Okay, it will only become the mark of the beast when it is officially the thing, the day of worship. If you don't do, there's punishment to it. So don't go around looking at people, oh yeah, I go to all churches, I have friends everywhere, I preach in every church. Because what I've discovered is that you've got to take the light to so many who do not know what's going on. There are so many people who worship where they worship because that's where mama and dad used to go to church. Can I get an amen out there? There are so many people who are in it, not for any other reason, but that's our family church. That's where we go. And I'll tell you this. I told, I've got a lot of my African-American friends, a lot of them. I love every one of them. And we were talking one time with some of the Baptist preachers, and they said, Pastor, you know, you need to understand, what's up with this uh, Sabbath thing? We're going to talk about it too. What's up with this Sabbath thing? I said, well, that's what God says. He said, well, uh, man, we've been doing this for years. And I said, yeah, I know you did. He said, well, why should I leave it? I said, you think about it. If the slave master never gave you what was right, do you really think the slave master would give you the right day to worship? Because the only day that the slave master, this has nothing to do with the Bible. The only day the slave master could free you to worship was Sunday. And that's the day where you had to put on Sunday best and chicken and fried chicken and do all the kind of stuff. So there's a people in this world, in this country, who believe and, and worship on Sunday, not because the Bible says so, but because it's a cultural pastoral thing. So when we do this, what's up, America? We're saying, let's go back to the word of God. What does God say? And we're going to have that study. You're going to love it. So here it is. This nation, so three things that I want you to understand here is, it's going to be a country coming out of a less populated place, and it's going to be a young nation. It's going to be what, everybody? A young nation, and there'll be no monarchy in it. You know, that, that, that's why it's different from the other beasts. In America, I love anybody who votes when elections come along. Come on to talk to me. Anybody who votes? Yeah, because some of you need to go vote. You know, people are talking about, oh, I can't vote. No, go vote. That's what makes this country beautiful. The fact that you can what? Yeah, there's a reason why they're trying to take away the vote. There's a reason why they're trying to take away the vote. And taking away the vote is in contradiction to this. Because this is one country that looks like a lamb, which means everything good looks like it's there. It's not there, but it looks like it's what? It's right there. Because this is a global leader who is going to influence the trends of thought for the whole world. Wherever you go in the world today, your money is compared to the U.S. what? Whether your money is more than the U.S. dollar. You think the U.S. dollar is the most powerful dollar in the world. It's not. But everything, even the powerful dollar, has to bow to the U.S. dollar. If you look at cultural trends in the world, everything is defined by who? United States. 
You can go to the whatever corner of the world, you're going to find somebody with the jersey uh, 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 James on it. I mean, people who have never seen NFL in their lives, they've got an NFL jersey. This is how powerful this country is. If you are to visit, if you have a passport, go somewhere, you're going to discover there are so many millions who are on the, at the doors of the embassies of the United States because they want to come where? Yeah. Come on, talk to me. They want to come where? Yeah, I've been to some places preaching, and I've heard some people say, Pastor, can you hook me up to come over? I said, I'm not powerful like that. He said, well, brother, just do whatever you can do. I said, really? <laughs> because there's so many in the world who are trying to come over to this place. I know when you're in America, it is you're used to the good stuff, and so you can complain about anything. And I understand that your complaints are real, but I wanted to understand there's someone somewhere who is simply saying, God, get my foot in. Because this is the one spot that everybody wants to come to. And it's part of the global plan of God. That when this nation speaks and empowers the dragon to do what the dragon must do, we will be so much caught in. Let me tell you, people tell me, oh, I don't like America. Oh, it doesn't matter what you don't like. When the time comes for this mark of the beast forced to worship, the whole world it's either you're going to march in the light or you're going to march in darkness. And right now, we are all preparing for our positions. Every little decision you make is part of that. So people think, well, pastor, wait for the day. Well, you're already preparing for the day. See, you don't get ready and be ready on the same day. Can I get an amen out there? So every decision you are making in your life, the devil is strategic with this thing. There is no time that's outside time. Everything we do, how you hate your neighbor, don't forgive somebody, all of that is building up so that when it comes to forcing, how you force your own family, force your spouse, force your children, you're already developing the muscle of force. By the time it happens, you're ready. So every day matters. Coming to church and worshiping, ain't no choice about this. And people tell me, Pastor, I don't know how to think about it. Really? Because a day is coming when it will be too late for you to even show up because it will mean dying showing up. Amen. Oh, Pastor, I don't believe in the Bible. Really? I would rather soak in the word of God because a day is coming where you are going to be killed if you are seen with the Bible. What the enemy has done now is make sure all this progress we are making when you think about it is taking away our memorization of the word of God. Oh, everything is intentional. Many of us don't read the Bible. We simply, oh, I listen to it. Pastor, I listen to the word. Anybody who listens to the word? We are so blessed as a generation, and if you're not careful, you, you, the things we need for the word to soak in is being taken away. Meditation on the word. People would rather do yoga. Come on, talk to me than for you to sit there and memorize a whole chapter. A time is coming when we are going to look at ourselves, brother, and discover there is nothing on the inside. David says, thy word, have I what? Aha. And that text told us the opening of your what? Of your word. And what's happening now, everything is so fast. And we think, oh, yeah. Oh, no, 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 no. You need to understand. The enemy knows that if you're standing on the promises of God, you are solid. And he knows that when you can uh, uh, not be sure of where you're standing, then when he comes in, you are taken with him. So we're making decisions every day. Why is it important for me to understand this? Because not only should we wait for that day when everything will be legalized, you don't know when you're going to die. Did you hear what I'm saying? Yeah, you don't have to live your life saying, well, we don't know when. No, no, you don't know when you're going to be taken out. You. I don't know. This may be my last sermon. I don't know what's going to happen between now and my house. I don't know. I don't, you got to live your life, plan your life as if you're going to live a thousand years, but you got to leave this thing as if today is the last day. Let the planning be a thousand, but your life, that's why the Bible says as long as it is today, don't postpone your decision with God because there are forces, unseen forces, that are wrapping this thing up. And if God said it, it's going to be true. So if you're here tonight, anyone to say, Pastor, wow, I, I want to, I want God in my life. I want to stand with God. 
In Daniel chapter 2, verse 20 and 22, we're not read those ones. Daniel says, it is God who puts up leaders. It's God who puts up what? And it's God who puts up nations. God is the one who does these things. And I want you to understand if God could put Nebuchadnezzar into power, if God could put Pharaoh into power, if God could put Alexander the Great into power, if God could put Joe Biden into power, it is God who put Donald Trump into power. Because every leader has a mission in the master plan of God. The anger in the country, the intolerance in the country. When you read the word of God, you don't need to see the faces of the players. You just need to know the principle of which player is going to do. So when you stay in the word, it don't matter. It don't matter you like them, don't like them, don't vote for them. People are not presidents because they are voted for. They are presidents because God wants them to be. And the nation is always right to elect the one that God wants to be president at the time that God wants them to be president. It's beyond us how these things work. I mean, you can be mad all you want, but as long as God created this thing, God is running this thing. So you're here tonight and you want to say, wow, God, I want to be ready. I want to be ready. I want to be ready not out of fear, but I want to be ready out of the joy of knowing that you got this thing in your hand. If you're here tonight, I'm going to ask you to stand if that's your desire. Listen, God, I want to be ready. I want to be ready not out of fear because you cannot love God out of fear. God is not looking for sons and daughters who are afraid, but if, for the Bible says he never gave us the spirit of what, everybody? Of, but he gave a spirit of what? Power, sound mind. That's what God does. When the truth of God comes your way, it doesn't shock you and freak you out, but it empowers you. You know it's God when he's saying stuff that he didn't know, and if you're like, I want to know more of this. And I'm not trying to know more so that I run away, but I want to know more so that I can love him more. And so you want to say, listen, maybe somebody's here want to say, Pastor, I want to receive Jesus Christ into my heart. I want Jesus, I want to start a journey of me and God and Jesus walking together. I just want him as my personal savior. And maybe someone is here who says, Pastor, listen, I'm backslidden, I, but you know, I was not taking this thing seriously. But you know, today just kind of, you know, I, I think, I think it, got, it grabbed my attention. Maybe you're on social media, you're watching on YouTube, you're watching on Facebook, and you want to also say, hey, you're not alone wherever you are. We are here for you. Just reach out, give us your information, because this is it. Which way America was birthed so that people can accept what God is about to do, and so that our priorities can be rearranged and our allegiances can be deepened in our love for God. So is there anybody who wants to say, Pastor, I would like to accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior in this place. Anyone who is in Daniel? All right, we all stand and we say, God, just revive us and keep us ready. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for what you've done here tonight. I'm so grateful and thankful that, God, you have used this little lamp of clay for you to just but show forth the beauties of your word. And, God, here we are standing in this place and others standing on social media Maybe somebody's even crying because, God, you have opened up uh, a can worm of questions and they want to know more, God, and they can't wait for tomorrow night's presentation. And we pray that, Lord, you may write our names in the book of life. And whilst you do so, Lord, we pray for this nation that, Lord, you may save as many as you want saved in our country. And you may empower the rest of the world that, Lord, you have this thing figured out. You have thought it out. You have got this thing figured out. You have the whole world in your hand, including this beautiful nation. And God, we pray that you may help us to be on the right side as Elijah did. Prepare our hearts so that, Lord, when the final call is made, we'll stand with our allegiance on you. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. And amen again. You may be seated. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming tonight. We are so grateful. Tomorrow night, we are going to get in and talk about something very, very powerful, the rise of the Antichrist. You don't want to miss that. What's going to happen whilst these things are happening? The Antichrist is on the way. But, well, how can I identify him? What are the traits? What are the characteristics that he will have? And so we'll meet in the same place at 7 p.m. tomorrow. Bring somebody else. Blessings on you, my friends, as you get ready.
What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me pure within? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my cleansing, these I see. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. For my part on these, my plea. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other found I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can foresee not to. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not of good. By the blood of Jesus, oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know, nothing but the blood of Jesus. This is all my hope and peace. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Jesus. This is all my righteousness. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Glory, glory. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, my praises for this I bring. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus.